G'day Chief. Here we are now, final little chapter to talk about your own personal routines, your own personal operating rhythm, and making sure it's optimized for the work you do and the strategy or the strategic plan you've got for your career and at work. Okay, so what we've got here, there's a template there. I want you to download that straight away and I'll put it up on the screen for you. The key thing here is what we need to identify is all of the personal things you need to have in your rhythm and all of the ones you need to have for work. Now, if you're in a leadership position, you are going to need to have an operating rhythm for your team at work. Now, that might be the daily stand-ups if you have or need them. It'll be the weekly team meetings. It'll be the monthly meetings and it'll be the annual review. Now, if you're in a team at work, that is you report to someone else, it's likely you'll have an operating rhythm for them as well. The first thing that I recommend you do is put in those two first. Put in the annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily requirements you've got for your boss and the team that you are in there. Then put in the key things that you've got for your own team. The daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, meetings, events that you are going to run to keep your team on track. And then what we do is we work in your operating rhythm or your routine around that. Because what we're going to have to do is make sure that if you've got your boss's big quarterly event coming up in a few weeks' time, your own personal quarterly offsite needs to be just before that. So I'm going to go through the key elements that are required for your own area. Whatever your boss puts together, that's up to them. But I want, the, want you to understand what you need to do for your area as a minimum and some of the principles, and what you need to do for yourself as a minimum and some of the principles. Okay, for you personally, what you need to have in your operating rhythm, in your routine, is the following. Number one, an annual off-site two-day at least planning session. This is your two or three days to do your personal visioning. This is where you do career and personal vision. If you've got a partner and a family, do it with them. Go away for a couple of days, book time out of the calendar. Around Christmas or middle of the year is normally a good time and get away from it all. Turn everything off and do your visioning process. If you don't know how to do that, go and do the Game Plan Masterclass series. In the very first chapter, we cover how to do that in depth. So you have an annual visioning process. Then you have a quarterly offsite, which is just you. Now, this normally takes about two hours to four hours. And it is you step out of the business, get away from it all, maybe go to the beach or the mountains for half a day or a full day if you like, and just sit down and just do a sense check. Am I on track? And at this point, I think you can combine that with what you're doing with your team. Are we on track for what I'm delivering personally? My career on track? Is it my life on track? Then with work. Am I doing all the right things? And then do your preparation for any quarterly requirements you've got for your boss's team. Okay? So the agendas are in these key things. I've got that listed for you. So don't worry too much if you're not picking it up just yet. Now you go down to your monthly. And the monthly for you personally is really not that important. I don't really have a monthly step out. I leave that to my team. So at an individual level, I have annual, I have quarterly, and then I have weekly and daily. I have a weekly reset. So that's where I sit down for about an hour every Monday morning, and I look at everything on my plate personally and from a business perspective, and I plan my week in a fair amount of detail. So at least I've got the right rocks in there, the right strategic pillars, they're in there. I've got all the family things that are in there, right? If I've got any commitments with the kids and I've got commitments with my wife, they will go into my calendar at the start of the week as early as possible so I can visualize the week in front of me and then every day I do my daily focus session. Now, I try and do it every day, but I don't need it every day, as I said in that module. I generally do it around three to four times a week. What I then do, this is the only other meeting that goes in every single week without fail, is Monday morning is reset, get ready for the week ahead. Friday afternoon is sign off. Okay? Most weekends, I don't work. There are a few where I've got to do a bit of work. That's okay. I don't mind. But most afternoons on a Friday, I sit down, I get out my mind maps, and I brain them. 
I get everything out of my head. I think about all the things that have this week gone and I just make sure I empty the vessel onto the page. So it's a weekly sign off so that I can enjoy the weekend and totally switch off. Then I come back Monday morning and there it is. So my rhythm as an individual looks like this. Monday morning setup. Deep, full new mind maps, all that kind of stuff. Get my strategy clear, plan the week ahead. Throughout the week, little couple drum beats, three or four drum beats. Uh, reset, reset, morning focus session, morning focus session, morning focus session, Friday afternoon, sign off. Okay? Then once a quarter, I go away for half a day and I get reset, full reset on everything I'm doing personally and with the business. Once a year, I go away for two days and I do a full new planning session. So that's me personally. That's my personal operating rhythm, and you can steal that as much as you like. Make sure right now you get into your calendar and you put in a quarterly offsite and an annual two day as, a, as an absolute minimum. Now, what about your team that you're leading? It's very, very similar. Two day offsite for your entire team to do your planning and your strategy. Quarterly, come together just to make sure you're on track with those real big ticket items. And what you do with the quarterly, which is in, on top of what you do with the monthly, what you do with the quarterly is you do any adjustments. You might do any additional planning and change direction a bit, okay? At the monthly, all you're doing is a maybe two hour meeting to make sure that everything is on track. It's really about strategy. You talk about all your strategic initiatives, any key improvements you're making in your area. If you're, you know, if you're just leading a contact center or a small sales team, what are the initiatives that you're doing in order to improve that? That's what Kate covered as number one at the monthly. Number two at the monthly is any big operational issues. And number three is any cultural issues. Okay, so what you get is this annual offsite, which is all about strategy. We don't do any operations there, right? It's all about strategy and getting commercials done, the year's planning, team building, bonding, getting close together. You get together once a quarter for half a day. It's all about strategy and it's all about team bonding, okay? When you get into monthly, we now go, it's a bit about strategy, it's a frame of operations, and it's a little bit of bonding. And then we go into weekly, and weekly is all about operations, right? We're, st we're keeping the lights on, we're moving things, we're making sure that everything's on track, any project work just gets mentioned if it's important. Otherwise, we talk about it at the monthly when everybody presents the work they've done. Then on a daily basis, you may or may not need a daily stand-up or whip, okay? Just if you do, don't stand there and talk about all the things that are just happening normally. If everything is on track, it's you don't mention it. What we talk about is exception reporting. What are the things that are off track? Maybe we're behind or maybe we're well in front. And that's good news to share, okay? So what you do is you share the outliers in those morning whips, but don't go into the detail of someone saying, oh, I did this yesterday, and they mentioned 25 things and nobody cares. Be pragmatic and use people's time wisely in those meetings. So you can see now that what you've got is your business annual calendar, annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily, and you've got your personal annual, quarterly, I skip monthly, and then I go weekly and I go daily. So that is how your personal and your business operating routines can fit together. What I then just double check is how does that fit in with any other teams or any other operating rhythms you've got to fit into, okay? As I said at the beginning, if your boss has an annual offsite, when are you gonna put yours? Is yours gonna be before or after? Now, some people might say before, but you know what, I tend to put mine after. Why? Because your boss might change direction. So if your boss has an annual offsite, it happens in January 20 every year, make your team's one February 5. Give yourself a couple of weeks to absorb it, make sure you understand it, then take your team away so you get this wonderful flow from the company vision, right, the company annual, then your team's annual, okay? But your personal one doesn't have to be aligned to that so much. It might be back in January, okay? So, sorry, in, uh, maybe over Christmas. That is how you put together an overall operating rhythm for you and your team. Now the work is, look at all the, I've got a template there, I've got some agendas and things you can focus on for each one. That's just as a guide. Put together your system. Then be able to describe it clearly. And this is the thing, if we go back to that Edwards Deming quote. If you can't describe what you're doing as a process, this is a process, 
You don't know what you're doing. Okay, Chief, that sums up operating rhythm. Go to work now and build out your annual rhythm and then stick to it. Because the longer you can stick to it, the better.